Hey explorers, which weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of rocks? You might have been tempted to say the rocks, since those are heavier than feathers, but it's a trick question. They're both a pound. But why do rocks weigh more than feathers? This, explorers, is a question of density. Density is related to the weight or mass of an object, how closely together the molecules that make it up are. Closer together, tightly packed molecules means it's more dense and heavier. Just like how more spaced out molecules means it's lighter. Density is defined by the mass or weight of an object divided by the volume. With the same volume or amount of a substance, the heavier it is means it has more mass and is more dense. Everything with mass or weight has density, but have you ever seen liquids stacked on top of each other because of their densities? We can do this by carefully putting liquids in a cylinder in order of how dense they are. This experiment is called a density column. We're going to be attempting a nine layer density column, but this can be done with as few as two liquids. The materials you'll need for this experiment are as follows. Rubbing alcohol, vegetable oil, dish soap, corn syrup, whole milk, lamp oil, water, honey, pure maple syrup, and motor oil. You'll also need a large glass cylinder, a turkey baster, and we've also got some items of various weight that we're going to drop in the container and see how they stack up. You'll also need a scale and a nice chart so you can track the densities of your liquids. We have our liquids that we're going to stack, but we need to make sure we're putting them in the right order. To do this, we're going to weigh them with our kitchen scale. We have ramekins full of the same volume of each one, so now we need to weigh them out so we can determine their density. First, I'm going to program my scale so it subtracts the weight of the ramekin. There we go. So now we can exchange that one with our ramekin full of honey and get its weight. So our ramekin of honey weighs 195 grams. So we're going to mark that down. So we can use that and put all of our liquids in order. And next, we just need to do the exact same process with each other liquid. We colored our water and rubbing alcohol, that way we can see them differently when they're in the tower. We've weighed out all of our liquids and put them in a chart in order of density. We started our experiment with 10 different liquids, but our goal is nine for our column. So we're actually going to lose water because it's very, very close in density to milk and vegetable oil. This chart represents the weight of each ramekin of liquid, but because each has the exact same volume, we can use this to represent the density as well. With all of our liquids in order, it's time to build our density column. We need to get our turkey baster ready, which is going to help us get all of our liquids gently in there without combining with each other. That means I've also got a nice hot water basin so I can rinse my turkey baster after each one. And now we just start stacking the liquids one by one. When we weighed everything out, the one that was the heaviest was our corn syrup. So we can take that one and very carefully pour it into our column, trying not to get any on the sides. We start with our most dense liquid. Now we can move on to our second most, honey. For anything after the first layer, you're gonna be using your turkey baster and you're just going to be grabbing a bit and putting it onto the column. Gently trying to get it against the side, that way it doesn't disturb the liquid underneath it. If we disturb the liquid underneath it, you might break that surface tension and start combining liquids together, which is not what we want for the finished product. So, Grab a turkey baster of honey. With experimentation, not everything is going to go right every single time. As you can see, our first two layers of corn syrup and honey actually kind of combined. This is probably because their densities are very close to each other. 
This is why we experiment and have peer reviews. But it means that we're ready to get going with our next layer in our density column, maple syrup. Once again, grabbing our turkey baster full of maple syrup, a little bit easier to work with than honey. Trying to sit our next liquid very gently on top. We can already see a little bit more definition in this layer, so that's good. The honey and corn syrup were very close on our density chart, but the maple syrup has about 10 more grams of difference in the weight. So there is a bit more of a significant difference in the weight of the syrup. So that's why we're seeing this nice layer forming that's not blending with our other two. I'll have to make sure that when I make the worksheet for this experiment to go up on our website that I mark it as very messy. Now we're adding our dish soap, which has a very different density than our other layers. So we're getting to see a nice defined layer start to form. Again, trying to make sure we're gentle about it. Want to avoid any mixing that we can. Our milk is up next with a weight of 131 grams for the ramekin. I really love that these layers are starting to look very separate. Again, going down the side because I don't want to mix these liquids together. Just trying to really gently place them on top. So the strange thing on this one is that the milk is sinking straight through the dish soap even though the dish soap is more dense. It sits on top for a moment and then you can just see it start going through but it forms these really cool kind of puffy clouds in the layer. Even though we weighed these out and they were separated quite a bit by density, the milk seems to be traveling straight through the dish soap and pushing the dish soap up as the milk goes down. An unexpected turn when doing our experiment, but as you can see, the milk is very clearly denser than the dish soap, even though we weighed it out and it said differently. This could have been because of the temperature we weighed the milk at when we first took it out of the fridge, and now it's different, which affects the density. There's always something new and fun to learn when you experiment. Sometimes unexpected, always great. The next layer in our density tower is our vegetable oil. So we'll grab a baster full of that. Well, our oil is very clearly lighter and less dense than our dish soap because that is making a very nice defined layer on top. Continuing our tower of liquids. There's our vegetable oil, a very nicely defined new layer in our tower. And now we can move on to our motor oil with a weight of 115 grams for our ramekin. Besides our bottom two layers that combined, we've got really nice defined layers in our tower. And that means we can move on to our rubbing alcohol. We colored ours green so it stands out and isn't clear like normal rubbing alcohol is. As we can see, the rubbing alcohol also went down below the motor oil, the layer that was supposed to be on top of it. And now the exciting part. We got our very last layer, our lamp oil. 
This is our lightest, weighing 95 grams for the ramekin, and should gently sit on top of our motor oil. Oh, this is a very cool tower. I'm gonna reset, clean up the lap, and then we'll have a look at testing out the density of some household items. We've got all of our liquids stacked into our density column and got to learn a couple things along the way. Did you know that chemical compositions and temperature can affect the density of a substance? As our liquids were sitting on our table, being weighed and then being stacked into our density column, their temperatures shifted just a little bit which did affect their density. This is why what we hypothesized isn't necessarily what we observed because their densities were a little bit different, just enough to reorder some of the layers. Most objects, when they warm up, become less dense. This is because their molecules get excited with the heat energy and expand apart, making them just slightly lighter. Water actually has the opposite effect. When water freezes and becomes ice, the molecules expand and it becomes lighter, less dense than water. This is why ice floats on top of water. Even though most substances, when they get colder, become more dense, molecules packed closer together. Could you imagine a lake where the ice is on the bottom instead? Would make ice skating and hockey very different. Grab your snorkel, Walter. We're going ice skating. Now we've got our nine layer density column. It is wild to see some of the clearly defined layers in here. I'll say my favorite is actually the milk and the dish soap. You can very clearly see the separation in the color and it's just really cool. This is where our household items come in. We can drop them into our tower to see where they stack up for density. First of all, a great idea is to hypothesize. So I think this is going to stop right in around our maple syrup. What do you think it's gonna do, explorers? Let's drop our marble in right along the side of our container and see what happens. Oh, it went right down straight to the bottom of our container. Oh yeah, you can see it down there. Now there is a good chance that it's going to start combining your liquids, but they will start separating out again because they're just not the same density. Let's try a light screw. I'm gonna drop it in a different place so we don't disturb the liquids all in the same spot, but let's see what happens. Oh, same thing, straight down into our corn syrup honey mixture. Let's go with something we know is quite light this time, a plastic bottle cap. Now you're gonna to have to get it filled with some liquid so it drops in. Oh, and that's just sitting right on top, right in our lamp oil layer. Let's try a game die and see what happens there. I'm gonna drop it down the back. I think, I think we're still gonna end up getting pretty low. I would say our corn syrup might be the one to take this. And, oh, oh. Yeah, that stopped right at the game start, but it was slowing down as it went through these bottom layers. Doesn't seem to be getting all the way down there. Because some of our items had very similar densities and sank right down into our corn syrup and honey, we have grabbed three more items that we think have very different densities. A birthday candle, a baby carrot, and a strawberry. The carrot sank right down into the dish soap layer and sits on top of the milk. The birthday candle is trapped between the vegetable oil and the rubbing alcohol. The strawberry sits very well in the vegetable oil layer. We hypothesized where the items were going to land, but observed very different things. Like the game die was much more dense than the strawberry, which was more dense than the plastic bottle cap that's sitting right on top. Wow, my predictions were pretty far off from what we got to observe. I guess that means I'm a little dense too. For more fun in the lab, subscribe to Clayton's Exploration Station on YouTube and social media. Plus, you can check out explorationstation.net for downloadable worksheets and guides to help you through all of our experiments, including the density column. Now you stay curious out there, explorers. Clayton's Exploration Station.